Welcome volleyball players. We're going to go over the volleyball position worksheet. This is an updated version of the one I put out a couple of years ago. A couple little tweaks, a couple add-ons along the way. So, start off the court, uh, you know, some cheer, one, two, three, go, and we get onto the court. So we generally start in our rotation one is generally going to be where the setter starts in the back right. Now, if the other team has serve, then we rotate back one most of the time so that our server can rotate back and be our first server. But we're just going to call this rotation one for simplicity. Now, let's say that the other team is serving, and we're in the middle of a game, and this is the rotation we're in. Well, the person that we don't want to take the first ball is the setter, because we want them to take the second ball, the set. So what we're going to do is hide them. There are two ways that we can do that. We can either tuck them up into the corner here, or we can pull them back off to the side. Those are the two places that he's generally going to hang out. Now, a very important rule is called the overlap rule. This person needs to be behind the front row outside. Oh, I guess I should go over what these mean. This is the back row setter, back row middle, which is generally going to be a libero at this point, so I'm going to be subbed in, back row outside hitter, front row right side, which will often be a setter, or at least when he goes into the back row, he would be subbed out for a setter. The same thing as this position. Front row middle hitter and front row outside hitter. Notice that each position is opposite its corresponding spot so that we can always have one of those in the front row and one of those in the back row. So he can move all the way up to the front row outside. This is okay. This is bad. He can move all the way to the left of the back row libero. This is good. This is bad. Now, for him and the front row middle, there is no overlap rule. Like, he can move all the way up to here and all the way up to here. This guy, this guy can move all the way anywhere in this area that he wants to, and it's all legal, because this guy, the front row middle, needs to be to the left of the front row outside and in front of the back row middle. So that's something to keep in mind. We often use that and exploit that in our favor. So for the first service eve, there are actually two options. Uh, there's actually several options, but these are the two options we'll go over. The first one, which I would call kind of the simpler one, is if you watch, the, the, this setter scoots up and kind of hides himself into the corner, bringing the front row outside with him so that they don't overlap. But then we only have two guys in the back row, so this front row right side pulls back so that he can pass also. Once he passes, he is going to, depending on your scheme, he's either going to take one ball out here, or he's going to come right through and take a right side attack over here. So this is one. So if we look at it, everybody kind of shifts around here, the setter gets out of the way. So let's look at that one more time. It looks like that. So let's go back into the regular. Here's another option. This one's more complicated, and the idea is we want our front row outside to hit the first ball. So he is the most important player in this situation, then we would use this one. What's going to happen is, now remember, he can cross over anybody except this middle and this setter. So how it's going to work is, this setter is going to scoot over, this guy is going to move over, this guy is going to move over, this guy is going to get in the corner, this guy is going to almost get in the corner, then this guy can come over all the way back and get into that U. He just has to be to the left of the front row middle and in front of this setter. So if we drew a horizontal line across, we just need to make sure that this guy's in front of that line and this guy's behind that line. So if we get in the rotation and, oop, drawing points here. If we get in that rotation and watch it happen, it looks like that. That way, he, after he passes, can right away hit an outside. The middle is close enough to run a middle, and generally that means that this right side is going to be out of commission probably for the first pass, unless he's good enough to run a slide or maybe, uh, depending on your how you number things, a 31 is what we call it. Um, I've heard letters referred to it in different clubs, but that's what we use. So if we're back in rotation one, we go into either of the serve receives and then play out the ball. Now, when the ball goes back over, we get into what's called base. So here's base. This is one thing that is different from the last video I put out. Uh, last time we had the outsides here, 
the middle's in the middle, and the setter is on the right. Well, a libero, generally being a smaller player, is better at digging balls that are low. So we flip-flop these two guys so that the, the libero can take more of the tips and hard-low shots, and the outside can take more of the deeper balls. Also, it allows the back row outside to easily come through for a back row attack, often called a pipe. So this would be base. Now, so they have their ball. Whenever the other team has the ball, we should be in base. Now, let's say that they pass the ball, set it to the outside, and we want to defend against their outside. So our outside is on this side. Their outside is on this side. Well, we want to double block. So we're going to move both of our blockers over. So let me... Defend it outside. So watch what happens here. Both of these guys move over for the block. This outside pulls off the net. He's got all the tips in this area. The setter scoots up. He's got all the tips in this area. Now the two hard hits that we have to worry about is cross. That's where this libero takes over. And down the line. That's where this outside takes over. Generally, we're going to start this guy in a little bit more, but if the other team starts hitting line a lot, we're going to scoot him over more and more as the game progresses. So that would be if we go from base, and if you watch how everyone shifts, defend it outside. Now, let's say that the ball comes over, and now we're going to play. Well, we get into what's called pre-hit. So pre-hit means so the ball comes over, we pass it up. Now, right before the setter touches the ball, this is what we should look like. Outside is outside the court, right side's outside the court, middle's in the middle here, and these two guys in the back row are splitting the difference. Now let's say that we set an outside. So if he's going to set, he's going to send this ball to the outside, pretty much what we want to do is have everybody get as close to that as possible, because if he pounds it off the block, we got to have some support. So here's what that looks like. Everybody just kind of runs as far as they can. Now, if we get back into pre-hit, we can kind of loosen this up a little bit. What we want to see happen is, well, this outside is going to be up at the net. The middle, oh, don't move the 10-foot line. The middle is going to transition over as far as he can. This libero is going to come up really as tight as he can. This outside will scoot over, and this right side will come in as far as he can. The setter, since he just set, probably won't have much time to move, but the idea is we just want to get everybody as close as possible. So if this ball pounds off the block and comes in here, we've got guys that can take it over. So defending or supporting an attack means just get as close as you can. So ball goes back over, we get back into base. Now let's say that they set their middle. Now there's different ideas. You can single block, double block, generally the outside pulls over, or triple block where all three guys block. At, at the level we play, at the freshman level, um, generally we're only going to double block. When you get to varsity and you have a fast enough right side to get in there and good enough defense, then you might be willing to try a triple block. But how this one looks, if we defend a middle, is our outside's going to scoot over. These two guys take the middle uh, tip area, and these two guys take the hard shots. Now the question is, what about this big gap in the middle? Who's taking that? Well, if these two blockers line themselves up well enough, then this entire space here, from the ball through the block, this whole space should be covered by the block. And anything that rolls over high enough, these guys should have time to get under. So they set there, ball comes over, we get into pre-hit. So we pass, we get to here. Setter bolts up, sets the ball. So... Now, let's say that he's going to set a middle. Now, generally, with a middle, it's so fast that everyone just has time to take a step. But the ideal situation is, whoa, this guy's moved too far. We get to about here. This is about as best as we can imagine. Now, it's pretty much set hit. So this guy's going to have time to get to about here. This guy's going to have time to get to about here. But in a perfect world, it looks something like this. So, ball goes over, Oop, that's the middle, ball goes over, and we get back into base. So, they pass to their setter, which is about here. Let's say they set a right side. Well, this is symmetric to if they hit an outside. The middle's going to shift over, this guy's going to pull off the net for the tips here, this guy's going to tighten himself up for the tips here, 
and both of these guys are going to shift this way to cover. So watch your position as I hit defend right side. Everybody shifts around, and the only hole we really have is kind of a roll to the middle, but the idea is if our blockers are high enough, then the, the roll would have to be so high that these guys could tuck in and get to that ball. So again, it looks like that. So let's say the ball goes over, and we're almost out of spots here. If the ball goes back over, then we get to um, base. Now let's say that their fat first pass doesn't get anywhere near the center, and they are not going to have a chance to run their offense. Then we yell free. Free means pretty much set up so that we can hit. It's kind of a selfish thing. When they're not going to get a hit at us. Let's set up for us. So we all shift like this. Now it's different than pre-hit in a subtle way. These two outside and right side are in the court for a free ball. Because if this guy's hanging out out here, a common place to drop a free ball is right here. Where if this guy's doing his job and staying in bounds, he can get to that ball. So again, they were at base, they have the ball. They're not going to get a hit, so we yell free, we get here. Now the ball goes over, this guy passes it, let's say, and then we get into pre-hit, these two guys transition out. So, now let's say that we are back in base, we win the ball, and we rotate. We go into rotation two. Well, if we go back to the beginning, this is the guy that we don't want to touch the ball. So what he's going to do is he's going to stack up onto the other right side, so now these guys are one unit, and they're going to move over to about here. Well, now we only have two guys passing. So we have a choice. We can pull the, the outside back, or we can pull the middle back. 99% of the time, an outside is going to be a better passer than a middle. So if we get back into rotation 2 and press serve receive, what happens is this guy tucks up, this guy pulls back so that he can swing around to hit his middle, and these guys are ready in there. So now, a little tweak, this guy can be all the way over to this middle. He just can't be on the other side of him. So a lot of times, these two guys, even though we say they stack, he moves more over to here so that he's ready to pull back and hit a right side. There's no reason for him to stand here. So that would be server receive in rotation two. Now, once we pass and the ball goes over, we go back into base which is the exact same base that we're always in. So all of these other positions that we did are exactly the same. If we're going to defend an outside, everybody shifts over. If we're going to defend a middle, everybody shifts here. If we're going to defend a right side, everybody shifts there. If they're not getting a good pass, then we yell free, and we're all in our pre-hit, or rather free, and then we get into pre-hit. All of that is the same. But if we're in rotation two, the initial serve receive looks like this. And then we play out the ball. Now let's say that we are now, let's get back into rotational. If we get into rotation three, now because of the way this is programmed, this guy would move back and then the other libero would move up, but because I have front row and back row guys, that's the why this is it. So this is not how the game would be played. This middle would be back here and this middle would be up here, but just the way the game, the program has to be run. It's like this. Oh, and this is Geometer Sketchpad for anybody that wants to know. I'm exploiting a, exploiting a math program to do what I need. So now, if we get into Serve Receive 3, this is where we really exploit that the overlap rule. This guy's going to tuck into his hole. This guy's going to pull back. This guy's going to pull back. This guy gets over here. Now, we want this guy to serve receive, and we want to hide this guy. So remember, the setter needs to be the left of the purple guy and behind the red guy. He can move all the way up to about here. And this outside needs to be to the left of the red and behind the purple. He can move all the way to here. So this is generally what our serve receive is going to look like. So if we get back and I press serve receive, you can see how those two guys are flipping positions. Everybody else kind of stays where they are. And then again, we have this U shape. We play the ball, we pass it over, and then immediately we get into base, which is the same base once again. Now, if we're in rotation three and we rotate one, 
then we are back, like we need a setter in the back row here, we need a setter in the front here, well that's the same as rotation one. So every three rotations, it looks the same, that's why I only talked about three rotations here. So I hope this helped, take some notes, write some stuff down, and if you have any questions, uh, let me know.